Hi, today we're going to talk about two plugins from Melda Production called M Stereo Generator and M Stereo Spread. They're both meant to create an illusion of a stereo sound out of mono by applying different methods. To make a mono signal appear stereo, we must create some inequality between the left and right channels in volume, time, frequency response, or a combination of them. By doing so, we mimic those processes which happen around us each time we hear something in nature. M Stereo Generator and M Stereo Spread cover all of the above mentioned tricks. This plugin adds a very short ambience to an incoming signal. To apply, simply insert it into a track's channel. Just remember it must be a stereo channel. For example, here in Cubase, I put a mono recording on a stereo track to get the plugin's effect. Now let's play around with its main controllers and see what they do. The wet sets the level of the effect. The character controls the time of an ambience. The absorption is responsible for a shape of decay. The second row of controllers belongs to an equaliser. It treats the wet signal only and it's very useful for shaping the effect's frequency response. I won't discuss the equaliser in details here. You can get plenty of information in the equalizer's tutorial. On the right side we see a goniometer. It's a very handy tool when dealing with plugins like this. Always keep your eye on it when setting up controllers. In general, an outward brown line shouldn't become wider than a circle. If it does, then it means the amount of signals in antiphase is higher than signals in phase in the left and right channels. That can cause a problem. One more thing to mention is that M Stereo Generator belongs to the insert group of effects. That is, you can't use it as a send effect because it always lets a direct signal through. This effect is not mono compatible. That is, it won't disappear when the process sound is converted back to mono. This plugin offers two different methods to create a pseudo stereo signal out of mono, and it also belongs to the insert type of effects. The first part, Spectral Generator, is based on the idea of making the opposite changes in the frequency response in the left and right channels. To explain it, I'll use the example of a graphic equalizer with independent band controllers for each channel. Let's set plus 3 dB gain for odd. 1, 3, 5, and minus 3 dB for even, 2, 4, 6 band on the left channel. Then we'll do the opposite on the right one. Now, if we play some audio through that EQ, different parts of the signal spectrum will be emphasised in the left and right channels. That'll create an illusion of sound expanded between two loudspeakers. That's the approximation of what the spectral generator does. If we press the mono button, those alterations will undo each other, which is great for mono compatibility. This method works especially well on broad spectrum signals. Let's hear it in action and explore some of its controllers. The spread sets the depth of those changes, or in other words, the effects level. The invert button swaps frequency response of the channels. The bands controller selects the number of filters used in each channel. The 
Focus changes the band's distribution over the full frequency range. The negative values group the band's location at the low frequency end and the positive ones move them to the high end. This controller has a huge effect on the resulting stereo image. Also, consider adding modulation to it. You can get an unusual pseudo stereo effect. The min frequency determines the lowest frequency of the effect. Frequencies lower than this won't be treated. For example, if you'd like to enlarge a stereo image of a mono bass instrument and still keep its main energy at the center, find out the frequency of the instrument's highest note and set the controller just above it. The saturation adds a bit of distortion to the signal. Here we find a classic delay-based generator. It may not be as advanced as the spectral generator, and yet it's here to cover all your needs. This method adds a short delayed copy to the original signal. At that, the right channel's copy has the negative polarity. Thanks to that, the effect will be gone if you convert the obtained signal back to mono. Again, it gives us 100% mono compatibility. Let's get familiar with its controllers. The spread defines the amount of the effect. The frequency. Because we're dealing with a delay-based effect, we have to be careful with the delay's value, as adding an echo to the original sound creates a comb filtering. The problem lies in that the fundamental frequency of some notes and the comb filter's notches can get very close or even coincide. It will make the sound walking between the left and right channels when it changes notes. If you don't want that, make sure the value set here is higher than the fundamental frequency of the signal's lowest note. For example, here is the lowest note of the audio I'd like to apply this effect to. Consequently, I should set the frequency from here and upwards. The min frequency is one more way to limit the process frequency range. Frequencies lower than this value won't be treated. You can achieve some evolving stereo image if you apply modulation to the frequency. Simply click on the modulator button, select the parameter you like to modulate, make some settings here, And that's all. Easy. I must also mention the widening controller at the top of the plugin. This is a usual mid-sized matrix that allows you to quickly set the stereo signal width. And so here we have three different methods to create a pseudo stereo signal out of mono. As with many other effects, there are no rules with the applications. Rather, use your ears, but keep your eye on the goniometer. Of course, you can also apply these effects to stereo signals. Let the creativity guide you. Have fun, and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.